<laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, that guy John Mueller from the University of Chicago that wrote the book Overblown about the terrorist mm. threat. Uh, one of the things that he says in there, he talks about how they over blew the threat of Japanese invasion during World War II and how uh, during the era of the Cold War that really it wasn't containment that protected the world from Soviet communism. It was the end of containment and how after America got beaten in Vietnam, the people and their support for the containment policy had really, uh, you know, waned. And so. Uh, the Soviets, um, and, and in fact, not only did they abandon containment, Brzezinski actually baited them, and Mel Goodman was on the show, former CIA uh, agent Mel Goodman was on the show just a couple of weeks ago and confirmed that, yes, in fact, Brzezinski came up with a deliberate plan to bait the Soviet Union into expanding into Afghanistan. And they also picked up all these new commitments in South America and in Africa, and this was what really drove them to the edge. All empires fall. When we finally stopped containing them and allowed them to expand, they took on way more, they bit off way more than they could chew. Tom. Yeah, I, 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 I'm totally persuaded by, by that line of argument. And let, let me add to it that if there's one silver lining, and I, I actually hate to use that sort of term, but if there's one thing good that we might be able to take out of the unbelievable moral and political disaster of Iraq, it's that the propaganda surrounding the war in Iraq was so transparent and so pathetic and embarrassing to anybody who isn't just a rah-rah, whatever the Pentagon says is holy writ sort of person. I mean, it was so embarrassing. The whole world knew it was BS that anybody who's really paying attention and using his brain would draw naturally the conclusion that, wait a minute, you know, if, if they lie this badly on this Iraq war, I wonder if they were lying to me 20 years ago or 30 huh. years ago. I wonder if maybe during the Cold War, the Pentagon was lying just as much as it's lying now. So it has, I think, at least in some cases, made people stop and think, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe I've been had all this time. Maybe this isn't just an aberration. I mean, you think so, Scott? Yeah, I think absolutely. You know, the, the best example of that that I can think of, of course, is Chalmers Johnson, the, the uh, brilliant author of the Blowback Trilogy, Blowback, Sorrows of Empire, and Nemesis, The Last Days of the American Republic. And it was actually before the Iraq War for him. It was the end of the Cold War. And um, he was, I guess, a Buchananite on the question of, well, so the Warsaw Pact, ha Warsaw Pact has dissolved. Obviously, now it's time for NATO to dissolve. Uh, we were promised all along that all this empire was simply for the duration of the emergency to protect the world from the Kremlin. But now that the Soviet Union has fallen apart... Uh, he saw almost immediately there was no peace dividend. The empire, as George Carlin said, couldn't wait for that Cold War to be over so we can go play with our toys in the sand over there in the Middle East and expand the empire. And Chalmers Johnson immediately said, wait a minute, maybe I was a sucker. And maybe the Cold War was not defensive. And he went back and revised his own understanding of the era when he was a Cold War, a spear carrier for empire, he says, where he taught the the importance and the value of the Cold War to his USC students, I believe it was, for years and years, and then went back and said, no, nah, wait a minute, America went wrong, you nailed it, Tom, NSC 68. I mean, we could argue about World War II itself, but at the end of World War II, they deliberately decided we are going to embrace empire. From now on, we have to steal and kill to get what we want. Yeah, I'm afraid that's the case. And then what sort of disappoints me is that there aren't more people you know, who describe themselves as conservatives, who wake up and realize that Milton Friedman's dictum that there's nothing so permanent as a temporary government program applies to the American empire itself. You know, we were sold this as it's a temporary measure. We know this is a threat to Republican form of government, but, you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. I mean, we, we were given that whole line. And then the thing, obviously, uh, e even if you thought the Cold War was necessary, it obviously isn't necessary to have this empire any longer after 1989 to 91 and yet they still have it they look to expand it they're always giving us they give us the propaganda line about the world is still a dangerous place i mean you know just slogans fit for a, sev uh, a seven year old and and it persists and i mean you know it's one thing to say you know we better not fund these school breakfast programs because you never know where that's going to lead but you know if you if you Staying up nights worrying about a school breakfast program, what about an imperial structure that sucks trillions of dollars into a nothingness black hole of profiteering and death? 
I mean, isn't that slightly worse than bacon and eggs for, for poor kids? <laughs> you would think so. But, you know, there's also this weird dichotomy with the military, right, where the enlisted guys don't think of themselves as government employees. They're the people. The government is their officers, right? And they're, there's that whole kind of weird thing where I think in the minds of regular American civilians, too, for some, some reason, the military is separate from the rest of the federal government. It doesn't count. In fact, it's the most believed in government program of all, despite the fact that it's the worst of all. Yeah, exactly. And this we cannot emphasize enough. This point we cannot emphasize enough. This is just as much a government program. It's, one of, it's, it's the worst of the government programs. It's the least efficient. It's the most monstrous. And, you know, I'll, I'll just admit that I, you know, I do an awful lot of travel. I'm on planes all the time. And so inevitably, and you know, I'm not saying that every kid who signs up to go fight is, you know, a bloodthirsty whatever. Because, I mean, some of them don't know what they're doing. They, you know, they may have good intentions. They may believe the propaganda. And, yes, it is morally their responsibility to learn the truth. But subjectively speaking, they may not think they're going over to engage in conquest. They're protecting the country. But by and large, I mean, my point is that when I'm sitting there on, on the plane and I'm told by the pilot or that I'm supposed to applaud because we've got people from the military on board, that this is the most honorable pursuit, in effect, is being implied. And, and everybody, I mean, left and right, Democrat and Republican, everybody applauds. Every single person applauds. And I'm thinking, look, I'm not going to clap for, gee, our military invaders are sitting here on the plane with me. I, I, I guess I need to applaud. No, I, I don't want to applaud. I want to tell them to stop doing this. Man, you're stealing my thunder, Tom. I have, that was going to be part of my whole TSA rant coming up later <laughs> in the show. I'll have to leave that off. What he said, everybody. That's exactly how I feel about that, too. And, and you know, I think part of it is, right, because we all know that there are 17, 18, 19-year-old kids who don't know shit from apple butter. And so it's we kind of just forgive them for their ignorance. Um, so we can't, nobody wants to spit on them and shout baby killer like, uh, the legend of the Vietnam War era. So we have to, you know, it's, it's okay maybe to attack, uh, the civilians in charge, but never is it okay to question the honor and valor and glory of serving the empire. Uh, yeah. And I mean, every right wing radio show, right? Somebody calls in and says, yeah, I was in the Navy for 13 years. They go, well, thank you for your service to our country. Yeah, this is what what really creeps me out, and particularly even in sometimes in in some um, some sort of libertarian libertarian light, let's say, sort of circles. You will hear things like this about the military, or somebody will say he was in the military, and they'll say, you know, thank you for your service. Thanks for protecting our freedoms. This is creepy. Damn it! I mean, this is creepy. There's, Saddam Hussein is not threatening your freedoms. I mean, I got I got a form letter once from actually one of the relatively better right wing organizations, and the form letter was a fundraising letter, and he was saying, ignorance of the tradition of Western civilization could be an even greater threat than Saddam Hussein. I thought, no, not that great. <laughs> Even greater than Saddam, really? You mean the guy who had a an, a, a, a an unmanned drone program that turned out to be a single prototype made out of plywood and string? Not, not that great. You can't possibly be telling me. I mean, this this is. I, I'm sitting there rolling my eyes every time. Every time I get this, they're protecting our freedom from whom? Where? What? What are you talking about? What What are your nuclear submarines doing about Al Qaeda? I mean, what? It is such a. Well, actually, such there's an, an answer to disconnect. that. They're shooting cruise missiles at women and children in Somalia. <laughs> yeah. And the idea that they're using these, you know, I don't know, ten billion dollar submarines or whatever to do so ought to be a clue that uh, maybe the submarine salesmen have taken control of the policy. <laughs> <laughs> maybe know? so. Maybe so. <laughs>